Can you really improve your finances in under 10 minutes? What tools can help you manage your money? And what's a simple way to determine if you have too much debt? We'll answer these and 97 other questions on this, the 100th episode of the Dough Roller Podcast. Welcome to the Dough Roller Podcast, where the best thing money can buy is financial freedom. We help you make more, spend less, and invest the rest. And now your host, Rob Berger. Whether you're just starting out buried under a mountain of debt or well on your way to financial freedom, this is the podcast to help you take your finances to the next level. Hey, everybody. This podcast is sponsored by Betterment, the most preferred automated investing service. Betterment has cutting-edge technology to optimize returns, minimize taxes, and save you time and money. Join over 34,000 customers who have already streamlined their portfolio management at Betterment.com slash Roller. That's Betterment.com slash R-O-L-L-E-R. Well, it's hard to believe, but uh, this is the 100th episode of the Dough Roller Podcast. I started this on Veterans Day uh, last year. I remember that uh, quite clearly because I interviewed Ryan from Cash Money Life, who is a, 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 a veteran, and... Uh, Interviewed him about uh, the ways that uh, you can uh, – some some sort of financial benefits of being in the military and uh, how you can take advantage of them. That was the very first podcast, podcast number one. And podcast number two, I remember I interviewed Tom Quinn, who's the financial expert uh, at FICO, probably the most knowledgeable person about the FICO score uh, you'll find anywhere. And it just kept going from there. It started out as a weekly podcast, and then I thought, nah, that ain't enough. And uh, so some weeks I've recorded two, three, four podcasts. And uh, here we are, I guess it's about 10 months later, right? Yeah. And uh, we've hit number 100. So what I thought I would do today uh, for this special episode is give you 100 ways you can improve your finances. Most of them you can do in under 10 minutes. That that was my goal. Uh, I've got a list of 100. Believe it or not, I'm going to go through this entire list on this episode. Hopefully I can move through it quickly. Uh, you'll uh, you'll be the judge as to, uh, to how, how well I've done and, and, and if any of these can help you. And uh, so what I'm going to do, go through the list. Uh, obviously, I'm going to move through each item pretty quickly. Uh, I'll mention some tools, some, some uh, online resources. In some cases, uh, I'll give you URLs. But uh, for most of them, you'll probably want to check out the show notes where I'll, I'll have this entire list online for you along with links to any of the resources that are relevant for each, uh, for each tip. So you'll find that. Uh, this is episode 100, so you'll find that at doughroller.net.net slash podcast 100. Woohoo! There you go. So uh, that's the goal today. And, uh, you know, one of the things I want to say, the, the thing that I think has been the most fun in these first 100 episodes is, is all of the email that I get from you guys. Uh, it's really been humbling and uh, a, a lot of fun. It's actually, I think, caused me to sort of rethink the direction of the podcast and really my blog. And I mentioned, uh, I kind of touched on this in a previous episode that I'm taking the Series 65 exam, which is an exam you have to take if you want to manage other people's investments on a, on a fee basis. But it's also, even if you wanted to simply uh, help people construct uh, an asset allocation plan, um, for example, and recommend um, investment. So, it, and it even has some implications for financial planning services that one might want to uh, provide. And uh, so, there'll be. I'm going to have a lot more about that in the coming months, uh, weeks, and months. Uh, but a lot of that decision really was triggered by all of the email that I've received from you. And it's you know, it's folks doing the best they can to make the most of their money, and they've got real questions, um, significant, important questions. And uh, I've given a lot of thought about how I can help people in that situation. And sometimes it's a simple email back to them. You know, a lot of times they'll want to know sort of, you know, straightforward questions and then they're, they're fairly easy to help, help folks. Maybe I refer them to a, an article online that I've read somewhere because I, I track all of my resources that I've seen and keep them all in Evernote. So it's easy for me to find. But a lot of times the questions are a lot more uh, subtle and nuanced and, and I, m- my ability to help folks in, in an email is just limited. Uh, so in any event, that's been a real motivation for me he- hearing from all of you. And, uh, I think we'll change, uh, hopefully I think for the better, a lot of the things that I can do for folks, but that's uh, coming down the road. So for today, a hundred ways to improve your finances. Most of them you can do in under 10 minutes. You ready? Here we go. Number one, balance your checkbook. I know, I know. 
with the internet and tools, it's so 19, I don't know, 70s to balance your checkbook. I balance my checkbook every month. I use YNAB, which makes balancing it simple. Forget under 10 minutes, I can balance my checkbook in about under 10 seconds, unless I've made a dreadful mistake, but that's just the point. Balancing the checkbook helps you find those mistakes, and it keeps you focused on where all of your money is going. Number two, learn something new. Uh, one of the sites that I really enjoy is Course, Coursera, C-O-U-R-S-E-R-A. Basically, it's it's free online courses from, from universities, and they cover everything. This isn't just finance-related. I mean, I'm looking at their site now. You can study, of course, mathematics, nutrition, history. The list goes on and on, and the courses are free. Learn something new. Um, and that that uh, is a great site to start. There are a lot of uh, options if you're looking for things like programming and uh, a lot of online sites there as well. But Coursera is one that I really like and have been taking some courses in finance, uh, a great way to learn something new. Number three, check the costs of your mutual funds. You know, if you've listened to the show, I'm a big believer in keeping uh, investing costs down. But so many people, they don't have a, a, any idea what their mutual funds are costing them, whether they're in an IRA, your 401k, a taxable account. Just put, find the ticker of your mutual fund, put it into Morningstar or some other f- f- free on f- finance site, and look up your expense ratio. It's going to be a percentage. It's going to be probably anywhere from 0.05% to goodness or some over 2%. And uh, take that number and multiply it by how much you've uh, got in that fund, and that will tell you what that fund costs you each year. So check the costs of your mutual funds. Number four, use an investment aggregation tool. You know, that's an online tool that can... Take all of your investments, your 401k, your IRAs, your taxable accounts, they can be at different places, and it brings them all into one place that allows you to look at your asset allocation, uh, look at the cost of your funds. I use personal capital. You know I'm a big fan of personal capital. You can check them out at doroller.net slash PC. That is an affiliate link. But it's not the only option. Fidelity, if you have a Fidelity account, they have their sort of personal capital-like tool available for folks that um, have a Fidelity account that allows you to bring in accounts from other places. Uh, So whichever tool you use, whether it's personal capital, what Fidelity offers, or something else, uh, check it out. It's a great and easy way to manage your investments, particularly if they're spread out uh, uh, with a number of different um, companies. Number five. Track at least one expense category for a month. I know tracking every dime, which is what I do, but I know that tracking every dime for some people uh, can just be overwhelming. So don't do that. Pick a, pick a category, an expense category. Maybe it's eating out. Maybe it's, it's, it's buying clothes. Maybe it's buying electronic gadgets. Uh, maybe it's uh, buying lunch every day at work. Whatever category you think is giving you some trouble, just pick one and track the, the money you spent in that category for a month. Trust me. It will be eye-opening. All right, number six, compare auto car insurance rates once a year. It's so easy to do online, and um, you know it could save you a lot of money. Uh, car insurance is, is almost really a commodity, and it's a very expensive one. And uh, so taking just a few minutes a year to see if you can get a better deal, I think, is worth uh, the time. And in fact, uh, there are options on my site, doorroller.net, uh, where you can look at uh, car insurance rates, and I'll leave a link to that in the show notes. Number seven, give your insurance agent a call and ask them for available discounts. You know, particularly with car insurance, it's just amazing the number of discounts that are uh, available. And, um, you know, it, it varies some, of course, from one insurance company to another. But I think so many people don't even realize the discounts that are out there. I mean, one of the ones I took advantage of was when our daughter went to college. And it was more than, I think it was 200 miles was the limit. But when your children go to college without the car, uh, they, that can significantly lower your insurance premiums Why? while they are away. Uh, that's just one of many. So give your insurance agent a call and ask them about available discounts. Number eight. Uh, you know, for your emergency fund, if you're going to keep it in a savings account, which a lot of people do, uh, make sure it's in a high yield savings account. Don't you know? I, I bank at a large bank, but their their interest rates on savings accounts are just terrible. So why park a lot of cash there? Uh, get a high yield savings account. Usually, it's from an online bank. Uh, you can transfer money uh, there from your your existing bank account, and it'll just earn more interest. The interest rate's not high right now; around ninety five basis points uh, is uh, the best you can do. Uh, but but you might as well get as much as you can. Keep the emergency fund in a high-yield savings account. Number nine, 
write down your investment policy, which is just a fancy way for most of us to say your asset allocation plan. Write it down. What's your percentage of stocks? What's your percentage of bonds? And then within each of those categories, how do you break it down? What's your percentage that you want in U.S. stocks, uh, foreign stocks, maybe emerging markets, maybe REITs? Uh, for your bond, you know, are you going to have tips? Are you going to have uh, just a total bond market fund from Vanguard or Fidelity or some of the others? Write your policy down. It doesn't have to be elaborate. I mean, it can be a couple of bullet points, really, uh, or in an Excel spreadsheet. But put it on paper so you've got it there. So it makes you sort of think about what you're doing. You know what your plan is, and you can make sure you follow that plan. Number 10, see if you can refinance your mortgage. That is a fantastic way to save money. I know a lot of people have already done that, uh, so it may not apply for you. But if you haven't, uh, you know, rates are still incredibly low. And maybe you haven't refinanced because you were working on your credit. You want to get your credit score up. Whatever the situation is, take a few minutes to see if you can refinance your mortgage. It will save you a bundle if you can. And related to that brings me to number 11, get your free credit report. You can get your free credit report each year from um, each of the three credit bureaus. Um, You want to go to annualcreditreport.com. That's the place to do it. And it's a easy process. You'll get your credit report in minutes and you can uh, check it out to make sure there are no errors on the report. Number 12 Check your credit score. You know, you get your credit report for free, but that doesn't come with your credit score. And, you know, keeping an eye on your credit score is important, particularly if you're going to need your credit for big purchases like buying a home or refinancing a home. Uh, I have a number of sources on on the website where you can get your credit score, whether it's a FICO credit score from the, the folks at MyFICO or uh, what's called an educational score from the likes of Credit Karma and Credit Sesame. You can check that out. Just go to doughroller.net slash Get your score, all one word. That will redirect you to the page on my site where you can get information uh, on getting your credit score. All right, number 13. If you've got debt, map out your debt. Uh, What I mean by that is list your creditor. Maybe it's a credit card uh, or more, (laughs) uh, school loans, car loans. List your, your creditors, the balance, what you owe, the interest rate, and the monthly minimum payment. Put that down on paper and take a look at it and keep that paper updated until you get out of debt. Now, there's a lot more to do to getting out of debt, but that's the starting point. When people ask me, how do they, what do they, should they do to deal with their debt? The very first thing is put it on paper, take a look at it. And it's going to make you think about things like, can I get the interest rate lower on some of these? Um, you know, can I refinance some of these? Maybe to get the interest rate lower or, and or to lower the minimum payment. But the starting point is to map out your debt. It may, it may be a little painful, uh, but it is the right start as you try to get out of debt. Number 14, take advantage of online tools. There are a ton of online tools that help you with everything from, well, getting out of debt to repairing your credit to managing your money, managing your investments. I did an episode uh, earlier, uh, in fact, not that long ago, on this very issue. And uh, I listed a number of the tools that I like. That's in podcast 94, doorroller.net slash podcast 94. If you go to the site, across the top, you'll see the navigation. There's a link for resources. That will also take you to that article. But there are a lot of phenomenal online tools. Take advantage of them. Number 15, if you're getting out of debt, redirect the extra cash you have to the debt with the highest interest rate. Now, I know there's some debate. Do you attack the high interest rate debt first or do you attack the the, the debt with the lowest balance? We've talked about that in the past. Um, and sometimes there are good reasons to, to maybe wipe out a, a small balance debt. But by and large, the best way to get out of debt the fastest and with the least amount of money spent on interest is to redirect your extra cash to the debt with the highest rate. Speaking of that, use a 0% credit card to lower your interest rates. That's tip number 16. I've talked about this before in podcast 44 doorroller.net slash podcast 44. It's something that my wife and I did. We used 0% credit cards uh, as we worked our way out of debt. It got us out of debt faster and for a lot less money. Tip number 17, read, read, and read. Read everything you can. Uh, You know, I read uh, books on finance and investing and uh, money management and careers and personal development, along with other things, histories, biographies, autobiographies. Um, but whatever interests you, reading, I think I, I kind of see life as a, a you know, lifelong journey of education. 
And I think it can help us in so many ways, both with with finances and money, but really in every area of our life. And speaking of reading, a couple of uh, ideas for you. The first one, tip number 18, read Your Money or Your Life. It is an excellent, uh, I think, foundational book about how how we should think. It really, really, it's about our relationship with money. If you've not heard of it, you know, go to Amazon, check it out, Your Money or Your Life. It is an excellent book. Now, I don't agree with everything in the book, particularly when it comes to investing. But in terms of our relationship with money, how we should think about money and its role in our life, Your Money or Your Life is phenomenal. Uh, number 19, Dave Ramsey's Total Money Makeover. That's another book that I recommend. You know, I'm not a particular fan of his investing advice, but when it comes to getting out of debt and staying out of debt, no one's better. Dave Ramsey's Total Money Makeover, an excellent book. And the third book I'll recommend relates to investing. This is tip number 20, all about asset allocation by my good friend Rick uh, Ferry, an excellent book if you want to understand investing uh, through the lens of asset allocation and using low-cost passively managed index funds. An excellent book. There are, of course, many, many others, but those are three to get you started. All right, tip number 21. Hey, we're, we're one-fifth of the way there. Hope you're still with me. Tip number 21, raise your insurance deductibles. Uh, certainly, if you've, if you've got the emergency fund to handle it, uh, I prefer the highest d- deductibles I can. I've got the highest deductible allowed in my state on my car insurance and on my homeowners. And uh, yes, you're going to be on the hook for that amount if something goes wrong, uh, but it brings down your premiums. And my view is uh, we should only insure that which we cannot afford to lose. And with an emergency fund, we can afford the deductibles. All right, tip number 22 Check your withholdings. I don't like to give the IRS an interest-free uh, loan, so I want to set my withholdings so that I um, hopefully don't owe anything at tax time, but also don't get a big refund. Now, I know there are different approaches to this. Some like to get that big refund uh, at the end of the year as a way to save money. That's fine if that's what you do, uh, but for me, I want to get that money and use it now, so check your withholdings. The IRS has a calculator you can use. Uh, and I will leave a link to that in the show notes. Again, that'll be, that'll be under tip number 22. Number 23, use a cashback credit card. I'm a big fan of this. This I, We use cashback cr- credit card for everything that we buy. I think one of the best out there today is the Barclay Card Arrival Plus World Elite MasterCard. Uh, it gives you up to 2.2% back if used for travel. Uh, it also gives you miles for travel uh, when you get the card. If you meet the the requirements, that can be worth up to four hundred bucks. Really is, I think, one of the best cards out there. Again, I'll have a link to a review of that card in the show notes. All right, number twenty four. Consider a backdoor Roth if your income disqualifies you from a deductible or Roth IRA. I've talked about this in the past. Podcast forty. If you want more information. You know the term. I, I'm hearing more and more that some folks in the in the f- finance world are not familiar with a backdoor Roth. All it is is taking uh, IRA contributions that that you can't deduct because of your income and, and your workplace retirement uh, uh, account. So in effect, you're 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 you're, you're investing after tax dollars, right, in this IRA and simply uh, converting it to a Roth. That's effectively what it is. And because you're dealing with after-tax dollars, uh, there wouldn't be any tax uh, taxes on the conversion unless maybe the account had some earnings. There are issues, though. There are nuances. You've got to worry about other IRAs you have when you do this. There's a lot to consider. Again, Podcast 40 is where you'll find more information, but it's definitely worth checking out. Tip number 25, pay your bills on time every time. We talked a lot about this with Tom Quinn in Podcast 2. Again, Tom's from FICO. Uh, But not paying your bills on time is the quickest way to uh, send your uh, FICO credit score uh, lower. And uh, although they've softened this a little bit, uh, these uh, late payments can remain on your credit report and affect your FICO score for seven years. Number 26, use a money management tool. Uh, There are a number out there. I use YNAB. It's my favorite. I think it's a phenomenal budgeting tool. Uh, But there's also Mint.com, which is a free tool. There's Quicken, of course. Um, I'll leave a link in the show notes to a list of these tools uh, that I um, wrote about some time ago. Uh, But whatever you pick, whatever is best for you, some people just use a spreadsheet. But I think using a money management tool can help us understand exactly uh, where we are financially and can help us make 
sound uh, financial decisions throughout the month and um, throughout the year. Number 27, sort of a challenge for you, but set three financial goals, whether they're for this month, this quarter, this year. Think of three things you want to accomplish that relate to your finances. Write those goals down and work towards them. I talk about setting goals in podcast nine. Boy, that seems like a long time ago. Doorroller.net slash podcast nine. Uh, but goal setting, I think, is so important, really, in, in just about everything that we do. When it comes to finances, pick three goals. Maybe it's getting out of debt, maximizing your 401k, and getting a will this year. Whatever the goals are, uh, pick at least three, write them down. And when you write the goals down, don't just list the goals. This is a, sort of an added tip. We'll call this 27 and a half. Write down the first thing you're going to do uh, to achieve that goal. So maybe it will be um, contacting an attorney friend of yours to see if they can do the will for you. Maybe that's the first step you're, you're going to take for that, for that goal. But whatever it is, don't just list the three goals. Write down the first step you're going to d- take to achieve that goal. Okay, tip number 28, start tracking your net worth. I think it's so important to see not only where we stand right now in terms of net worth, but how it changes over time, and it's you know as you it's kind of like keeping a, a, a diary in a way, you know as you as you have more and more data over time, and you can see how your net worth changes. You can see how good decisions that you make improve your net worth. Maybe not so good decisions hurt your net worth, uh, but it really is important to understand where where you are financially, and the, and your your net worth statement to me is um, uh, the the most important document to understand where you are. It really is the scoreboard. I talk more about that in podcast 10. All right, tip number 29. Use the power of the debt snowball, or some call it, call the debt avalanche, uh, when you're getting out of debt. It basically means continuing to make the payment you're making now, even as your minimum payments perhaps go down on credit cards, and even as you pay off debt, your minimum payment goes down. Uh, don't don't reduce what you're paying each month as that happens. Keep paying the same thing. Just apply the extra money to other debts. I talk about this in podcast 20. It makes a huge, huge difference, both in terms of how much it costs you to get out of debt and also how long it takes you to get out of debt. Okay, tip number 30. Set aside some fun money. Uh, you know, we talk about saving. We talk about investing. Those are all important but we need balance in life. And this really hit me the other day. My wife and I were talking, and she's talked about how when she spends money on herself, she feels guilty about it. Uh, and she's, uh, I guess, more frugal than I am, uh, although I manage our investments and whatnot. But, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't, you know, I, I, I didn't think that was the, the I, I felt bad about that. And I, you know, I said, well, I hope I'm not the cause of that. And I said, you know, obviously we have to be smart with our money, but, you know, we need balance and we, we should you know, have fun too, right? You want balance in life. And so we talked about it. And what we decided was she, we, she was going to get, I, I hate to use this term, but, but an allowance. In other words, we, we, we're going to, she's going to get X dollars each month and she's going to spend it however she wants. That's what it's for. Um, so she won't feel guilty about spending the money. We talked about the amount and, you know, it, it, it was really her decision, not mine. Um, but we were both agreeable to it. And um, so that's what we do each month. Um, I go to the ATM because she usually asked me to, uh, um, and and get out the the amount that she she you know decided on, and then that's her money, and she doesn't feel guilty about it. That's how we did it. You know, there's no one one right way. Actually, some people might might really dislike that approach. That's okay. The point is this: um, have some fun too, right? It's not all about just saving and investing. All right. Tip number thirty one. Write down your plan to rebalance your investments. We talked about um, rebalancing in podcasts 51 and 52. It's so important. But write down your plan. Maybe your plan is to rebalance your your investments every six months. Maybe it's to rebalance your investments when they they drift by more than 5%. Whatever your plan is, write it down and then, of course, follow it. If you don't do that, you will let your emotions or market timing dictate when and how you rebalance your investments. So instead of doing that, Come up with a plan, write it down. All right, tip number 32, calculate your debt ratio. What do I mean by that? It's it's your non-mortgage debt as compared to your net income. So you add up all of your non-mortgage debt, and when I talk about your non-mortgage debt, what I mean by that is your minimum monthly payments each month. So this would be your minimum monthly payments on your credit cards, your school loans, your um, car loans, 
everything but your mortgage and then divide it by your net income. That is your, 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 your income minus your taxes. And this amount should equal less than 20%. That's sort of the target that most financial advisors set. What does that mean? It means that if your, your debt ratio is over 20%, um, you're going to struggle from month to month to make those payments. Doesn't mean you can't. Doesn't mean if you're at 22%, the wheels have fallen off financially and you know, you're in deep, deep trouble. Uh, but it should be a red flag uh, that you've got too much debt and that you need to work on it to get it lower. Of course, the ideal is not to have any non-mortgage debt. Uh, but I understand that not everyone is in that position. So calculate your debt ratio, the payments you make each month on your non-mortgage debt divided by your net income. See where you stand. Are you above 20% or are you below 20%? And while you're at it, tip number 33 is calculate your front-end and back-end ratios. Those are the terms used in the mortgage industry uh, when you apply for a mortgage. So how does that work? Well, the first thing you would do is you take your mortgage payment, or you could do this too if you rent, your rent, and divide it by your gross, your monthly gross income. That should equal 28% or less. If it's more than 28%, that means you're paying a lot for your, for your rent or your mortgage, uh, and you could struggle from month to month to make those payments. And then the back-end ratio is taking, your, your, again, your mortgage payment or rent, along with the payments on all of your other debt. So this is all of your debt combined, the, the monthly payment. Divide that by your gross income. You really, by and large, don't want that to go above 36%. Again, if it's 37%, if it's 38%, you know, the, the world hasn't come to an end, uh, you may just want to work on getting it lower. If it's 50%, then you're going to struggle month to month to make ends meet, and you're going to want to look at um, bringing that percentage down uh, as quickly as you can, recognizing that it may take some time. Tip number 24, excuse me, 34, automate your finances, whether it's direct deposit of your paycheck um, automatically uh, investing. Of course, you do that in a 401k, but you can set up automatic investing in an IRA, for example, or even in a taxable account. You can set up a lot of your bill payments to, to auto pay every month. We automatically pay things like our uh, utilities, our, our phone bill, cable, um, our, our trash service. Uh, and uh, for a lot of these, we have them automatically billed to our cash back credit card. Um, you can also set up savings uh, to, to automate to, autom- to automate your savings by having um, uh, a certain amount of money automatically transferred from your checking account to your savings account, whether it's at your existing bank or a high yield savings account at, a, at an online bank. But automate your finances in every way that you can. Number thirty-five: Check to see if you can get rid of private mortgage insurance (PMI). If you didn't have a twenty percent down payment on your house. That means you're likely paying PMI each month. Uh, as in, in addition to your mortgage, we paid it when we bought our first home. Uh, but be in contact with your mortgage servicer to find out what you need to do uh, to get out of that PMI requirement. It usually means uh, equity of at least 20% uh, with your property. Uh, but stay on top of that. Work towards that goal of getting rid of that PMI. It will make a significant difference in your monthly budget. Tip number 36, select and use a cash back website. I talk about cash back credit cards. This is a cash back website. These are websites where you can go through when you want to buy something online. And if you use their website before going to the online retailer, you can often get cash back uh, from your purchase. Now, I've written an article outlining what I think are five of the best uh, cash back shopping websites. And you'll be able to check that link out in the show notes. Again, under tip number 36. Easy way to save some money. Tip number 37, switch to a prepaid cell phone. You know, Republic Wireless is my favorite. I'll be switching when contracts expire, uh, but you can save a bundle as compared to a two-year contract. Switch to a prepaid cell phone. Tip number 38, this is sort of an obvious one. You've heard it many times. Max out your retirement savings if you can. That's oftentimes a process for folks. You may not be in a position to save uh, all that you can in a 401k and an IRA, for example. It may take you some time to work up there. That's fine. Redirect some of your raise uh, to that savings. Um, do what you can. I know you. a lot of people are also dealing with debt at the same time, so you're oftentimes dealing with a lot of different and sometimes competing financial priorities at the same time, uh, but work towards max, maxing out your retirement savings. The tax advantages are just too good 
to pass up. Number 39, consider a HSA as a retirement savings vehicle. It can be a great way for those super savers to save even more for retirement than what is allowed in a 401k or an IRA. And if that's new to you, you can check out Podcast 67 for more details. Tip number 40, refinance that student loan debt if you can. I know student loan debt is a significant issue for a lot of folks. It was for for us for a very long time. I mean, it took me, oh goodness, I would say 18, 19 years to pay off my law school uh, loans. It takes folks a lot of time. If you can refinance that debt to lower interest rates, you can save a bundle. Um, I interviewed a f- folks from SoFi. Uh, and on that very topic, you can check their site out at doughroller.net slash SoFi, S-O-F-I. They can help you refinance. They may be able to help you refinance some of your student loans. That is an affiliate link. All right, number 41. Are you going to college or do you know someone that's going to college? Have a plan with your degree, particularly if this is, you know, um, your children are going to college. Have a plan with your degree. It used to be that it was a view that any college education is 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 a big plus, and I think at one time that was true. Not so much today, and uh, so you know you hear about these these folks. The, the, the reporters seem to find them. They went and got some degree, and then they just don't have any use for it. And uh, so you know, college is a, a fantastic, uh, of course, way to you know improve your earning potential over your lifetime. But make sure you have a plan with your degree, and you understand how you're going to use it, what the limitations are. Uh, with it. Don't just assume that going to college is going to help you make more money. It may or may not. Tip number 42, consolidate investment accounts if you can. It just makes it much, much easier to manage everything. If you have multiple IRAs, for example, you know you may be able to consolidate them. Uh, certainly, when you're working, you have a job with a 401k, you're limited. But when you leave that job, you can move it to your next employers, at least most of the time, or perhaps roll it over to an IRA I moved our SEP IRA from Scott Trade to Vanguard. I loved Scott Trade. In fact, I think it's one of the best brokers out there. Uh, but I consolidated to Vanguard so that it would made it easier to manage our investments and easier for my wife to under, you know, kind of understand and follow uh, where we stand on different things without having to deal with yet another account. So consolidating investment accounts where you can, I think, makes managing your investments much, much easier. Number 43, Declutter and sell your stuff. I look around our house. Uh, by the way, if you all came to my home right now, you'd say, Rob, I, I can't even imagine. You, I, why in the world did you put this tip on here? Because you're, you, haven't, you haven't done this. You know, The clutter at times just drives me through the roof. A lot of it is just a matter of time. Uh, I got kind of gung-ho on this and then kind of lost uh, the momentum. And we did sell some things. But declutter and sell your stuff if you can, if you've got the time, make the time. Not only do you put some money in your pocket, but man, you you, you get all the clutter out of your home. Number 44, you know, I mentioned um, tracking expenses uh, for one category for a month, but number 44 takes it a step further, and that is just set up a budget. I use YNAB. It's so easy. I download all our transactions from our bank account and our credit cards. Uh, I don't spend more than probably 10 or 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes tops a month and I know where all of our money goes, and I can plan the next month. It's very easy. But whether you use YNAB or not, set up a budget. 45, talk to your significant other about finances. This is something that my wife and I have started uh, to do. Part of it was born out of my desire to make sure that she understood our investments, where our money is. You know, there seems to be in a relationship, there's always one that sort of, not not always, but it seems frequently, there's always one that sort of manages the finances and one that doesn't. And I just grew concerned that I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want something to happen to me and she not have any idea about how I manage our money, where our investments are. So we talk about it, um, probably not enough, but we started. And um, so talk to your significant other about your finances. Uh, tip number 46, if you don't have one, get a will. Uh, find an attorney. You know, as a lawyer, it's kind of funny to me, but I hire a lawyer to, to write my will because I, you know, uh, trusts and estates is a very specialized area of the law. It's not what I do. I don't know how to write a will. I guess I could learn, uh, but I didn't and I, I don't. And um, in fact, we just had our wills redone. And uh, yeah, it's an investment, but it's an important one. And uh, so get a will. With that, tip number 47, and I realize now I've misnumbered my list because I have two 46s. We'll call this 46 and a half. 
it makes sense. You'll get it. Here it is. It actually comes from a reader named Bryant. He wrote and he said, I would like to purchase a new will. I am wondering if I should use an online company such as LegalZoom or use an attorney. What advice do you have for me? Uh, so this tip, for I'll call it 46 and a half. Um, I don't have any experience with LegalZoom. You can get a will from LegalZoom. I suspect that if you have a simple will, they probably get the job done. Uh, if you um, have more complex uh, situation, you probably want to talk to an attorney. But I mention it because it's an option out there. Again, I don't have any experience with LegalZoom. If you do, I'd love to hear from you. Shoot me an email at drdoroller.net and let me know how that worked out for you. But it's apparently an option, so I mention it to you. All right, now we're going to go to 47. Medical directive. This was something else that we did when we got our wills done. We signed medical directives. That is, what kind of medical care do we want if we're unable to make these decisions for ourselves? And who's going to make the decisions for us? And what kind of life-saving measures do we want taken uh, in those, you know, what will be obviously very difficult circumstances? And it's kind of, frankly, a little unnerving to read these documents and sign them. It makes you just realize just how mortal we all are. But it's an important uh, part of, of, of estate planning. And uh, they're not particularly expensive, uh, but I, I think they are critically important if, if the unfortunate were to happen. Tip number 48, create a list of uh, important papers. What I mean by that is, you know, if something were to happen to you, um, would others know what papers you have, things like the will, of course, and medical directives and inv- investment accounts and all these other sorts of things, would they know where to find them? Would they know what to look for? Would they know what you have? And one way to deal with that is to create a list of important papers uh, that would be used by, say, a trustee uh, or an executor and the location of those papers. Oftentimes, you know, you might keep them in a safety deposit box, uh, but sort of an itemized list, an inventory of what you have, what's important and where they can be found Uh, very important if the need should arise. Tip number 48, take an inventory of your stuff for insurance purposes. You know, with a a smartphone, it's easy to snap the pictures. Uh, You can even uh, take the pictures and save them to Evernote, for example. Uh, So it's easy to do, and I confess, I have not done this. So this tip I need to take. It's important. Uh, Tip number 50, use LastPass or other similar tools to store all your passwords. You know, Online security is critical, whether you're dealing with banking, investing, whatever. And uh, tools like LastPass can create really complex passwords that you don't have to remember and you can still use to log into the accounts that you need. Uh, I've used LastPass uh, as well as other tools. Um, They all have their advantages and disadvantages, so you'll want to see what's best for you. LastPass, I think, is a good option. Whew. Okay, we're halfway through this list. Man, I don't know what I'm going to do for the 1,000th episode. All right, number 51, budget monthly for periodic expenses. Periodic expenses would include insurance, like car insurance that you may pay twice a year, uh, life insurance you may pay once a year, that annual vacation, uh, gifts, that sort of thing. Expenses that don't happen consistently month in and much month out. Figure out what your total costs are on a yearly basis, divide by 12, and save that amount each month for those eventual expenses. It'll help avoid surprises. By the way, WideNab makes that very easy. Tip number 52, start a 529 plan for your child's education. It's a great way to save for a child's education and get some tax benefits at the same time. Uh, We had two two 529 plans for our children. They've now used those 529 plans, uh, but it's a great way to save for child's education. Tip number 53, think twice before co-signing for a child's, for your, your son or daughter's uh, education loans. Uh, you know, sometimes it seems like the only option, maybe it is. Um, I, my tip here isn't to never co-sign, but to think twice before uh, you do it, um, because it can create real significant financial burdens for you when you're least able to cope with those financial burdens. Tip number 54, use a smartphone app for banking. You know, we use the Capital One 360 app uh, on our iPhones. That's where we have our high-yield in, uh, interest uh, savings accounts. And it, it makes banking just a snap. I can transfer uh, funds from my account to our children's account or preferably vice versa. Um, and uh, we can deposit checks with uh, by taking a picture of them. Smartphone apps for banking, 
Uh, big thumbs up. Love it. 55, tip number 55, ask for better deals. You know, just picking up the phone and asking uh, for interest rates to be lowered on credit cards. I've, I've had my interest rate lowered on my, my, my home equity line of credit, which I don't have anymore. But when I did, got the interest rates lowered. I got our trash service. Uh, they shaved uh, about 30% off of, of, of the cost with just a phone call. I've gotten better deals on cable packages uh, just by asking. Speaking of cable packages, tip number 56, you should reevaluate yours. Uh, cable can be, when you add an internet and phone, can be a huge expense each month. And uh, you may have just what you want at just the best price, but then again, you may not. And it's worth checking it out to see how you can save some money, whether it means switching to a different provider, perhaps reducing the package that you have if you're not using it. Uh, but whatever you do, reevaluate that cable package. It could save you big bucks. Tip number 57, use a flexible spending account. You know, we use the Healthcare Flexible Spending Account. It's a great way uh, to put aside uh, pre-tax dollars that we can then use for medical expenses through our employer if you have that option available to you and it makes sense, take advantage of it. Tip number 58, take advantage of the catch-up contributions in 401ks and IRAs if you're 50 or older. It gives you an option to save even more for retirement. Tip number 59, determine your, ma- your marginal tax rate. What is your, the tax rate for the last, dollar, last taxable dollar you earn? Um, this may seem like an odd tip, and you might say, well, how would you use it? Well, you can use this to evaluate whether a Roth uh, IRA or 401k is best for you versus uh, a pre-tax uh, 401k or IRA. Marginal tax rate is not the only thing you should consider there. Uh, effective tax rate is important, too. Uh, for reasons I've discussed, I think, several times on the show. Uh, but understanding your marginal tax rate will, for example, help you calculate how much in taxes you'll save uh, by making a pre-tax contribution to a 401k uh, or an IRA. You know, it could also give you insight into whether it's worth working those extra hours for a few extra bucks or for that a little extra bonus. Uh, is it worth your time that you're giving up uh, to make those extra dollars that are going to get hit at very high tax rates. Tip number 60, you know, protect your computers with virus software. You know, I've, I use it even on a Mac, I use it. Um, but again, this goes to sort of the, the, the tip on passwords. Um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of bad actors out there uh, uh, that will do whatever they can to steal your money and you want to protect yourself. Uh, so protect your computers as well. And speaking of that, tip number 61 Back up your computers. Data loss can set you back big time. Now, a lot of stuff that we have today is on the cloud, so it's backed up, but I also back up all of my stuff. And um, the great thing is, you know, you can back up things wirelessly within your home. Uh, we have uh, wireless routers that include hard drives, and so the computers back themselves up automatically every day, wirelessly, right to those hard drives. Very easy to set up. Tip number 62 okay, this may be under the self promotion category. But look, I'm tired. I've been through 61 tips already. I got almost 40 to go. Tip number 62, subscribe to this podcast. You can do that, uh, of course, through iTunes. If you go to doorlord.net slash iTunes, that redirects you to the iTunes page where this podcast resides in iTunes or on your iPhone or smartphone. You can subscribe to the podcast. I'd very much appreciate it. All right, 63. Mentally prepare for the next bear market. And what I mean by that, you know, you'll hear oftentimes, are you ready for your portfolio to go down by 30% or 40%? Percentages are hard to internalize. Translate that into a dollar amount. If you have a million dollars and you're at 80% stocks, 20% bonds, multiply that by 40%. That's 400 grand. And ask yourself, how will you handle a portfolio that when you check your balance is at 600,000 down from a million? You're going to stick to your asset allocation plan or not. If you think there's any doubt in that, you might want to be looking at your asset allocation plan now or doing things that can help you, in fact, stick to your plan. So mentally prepare now for a bear market. You know, they say those that sweat in peace uh, in peace don't bleed in war. Well, as far as the market's concerned, we're at peace right now. So this is when you want to sweat. So when the bear market happens, you don't bleed. 64, this is something that I've been trying to do lately, and that is this. Make a daily plan. You know, we talk about setting goals and long-term plans. That's great. But what are you going to do tomorrow? What's the first thing you do when you wake up? What are the three things you need to do tomorrow to, for it to be a successful day for you? Make a daily plan uh, for your life. 
set of priorities on a daily basis. Yes, we have long-term goals, long-term plans, but they all happen one day at a time. 65, write down 10 things that you're grateful for. I think this puts us in the right frame of mind, mind particularly if things are tough. And they don't all have to be financial. In fact, well, I kind of hope they're not. But take a minute from your busy day, write down 10 things you're grateful you're grateful for, 10 things you're thankful for. 66, contribute enough to your 401k to take advantage of your company's matching contributions. You don't want to give up free money. I know for some, it's hard to hit that number. Uh, maybe it's more than you think you could possibly save. Keep working at it. Increase your contributions, even if it's little by little. Take advantage of the company match. 67, use money ratios to see if you're on track to retire. This may seem a little bizarre, but if you check out podcast 31, you'll hear you'll see what I mean. There are money ratios that based on your age and your income and how much you've saved, you can see if you're on track to retire or not. It's based on a book by Charles Farrell called, well, Money Ratios. Excellent book, by the way. Um, it's a, I'd call it a rule of thumb. It's not the end analysis. It's just a starting point. Uh, if you want to retire early, uh, you'll have to go far beyond those ratios, but it's an easy way to see if you're on track. Tip number 68, give stuff away. What do I mean? We have folks that uh, call us. They're, they're coming by the neighborhood. These are charities, uh, charitable organizations. They're looking for donations of stuff uh, for, to help their cause. We set them outside uh, when, when, you know, when we know they're coming. It helps us uh, get rid of stuff that we're not using. Uh, it gives us a tax uh, deduction. Uh, but more importantly, it helps these charities who could use our help. So give stuff away. It's a great way to, to kind of meet a number of goals all at one time. Tip number 69, check your Social Security benefits. Do you have any idea what, what you're on track to get from Social Security? You can go to socialsecurity.gov slash mystatement. Again, I'll have this link in the show notes, but there it is, a pretty a fairly easy URL, socialsecurity.gov slash mystatement to check your Social Security benefits. Tip number seven, uh, conduct a home energy audit, or better yet, see if uh, folks in your area, usually utilities, will conduct an energy audit for you for free. Uh, This can include looking at the insulation in your home, looking at doors and windows to see how airtight they are. Uh, It can end up not only um, maybe maybe making a little less uh, impact on our environment, but saving you money at the same time. Uh, I have sort of a homeowner's guide uh, to do-it-yourself home maintenance, which includes information on energy audits. I will leave a link to that article next to tip number 70 in the show notes. Tip number 71, buy a paper scanner. I've got one, a, a scan snap. I absolutely love it. I, I scan, well, literally everything. I try to go paperless, although as I look around at my desk at the moment, I, I see that I've failed miserably. But for example, one of the things is receipts uh, for tax for taxes. You know, I can scan uh, receipts, uh, save them to a folder in Dropbox for the tax year, and then I know I've got them. Can give them to my accountant at the end of the year. That's just one of, of many ways to use a paper scanner uh, to declutter your life and to get more organized. Tip number seventy-two: Ignore Facebook. Uh, my wife and I talk about this from time to time. You know, Facebook can be, I guess, a good tool, um, uh, but it can also be a way of, uh, tr- you know, trying to keep up with the, with the neighbors and the relatives. You know, t- some people tend to, I think most of us probably tend to put our, our best foot forward on Facebook and we, we, we put everything um, uh, on there that all the good stuff and here's what we're doing and this is what we just bought and this is the vacation we just took. And I think some people can get so wrapped up and what other people are doing. And Facebook, I think, has become a big part of that. And if that's you, unplug for a while. All right, tip number 73, reinvest those dividends and interest. You know, we've got a series that I've really just scratched the surface on dividend investing. Uh, I've got a lot more to come on, on that point. But make sure you're reinvesting your dividends and, and interest from bonds. I think most people probably are. Uh, if you own mutual funds, uh, you know that kind of happens Uh, I think for most people, automatically. If you own individual stocks, and I do, uh, I have it set to automatically reinvest those dividends. You don't have to do that. You can have them paid out to your account and then reinvest them yourselves. That may be one way, for example, to rebalance your investments. Uh, But however you do it, 
if you're still saving for retirement, uh, reinvesting those dividends and interest will make a huge pa- impact on how much you have uh, saved for retirement by the time you reach your golden your golden years. Tip number 74, don't drive your wealth. Cars, I think, are some of the biggest wasters of wealth. Um, and, uh, you know, it's something that I've learned. Uh, didn't learn it right away. I was driving my wealth for a while, but I'm not now. Now, I don't mean by that you can't go out and buy an expensive car. I mean, it depends on where you are in life. If you're, you know, worth $10 million and you buy a $100,000 car, I don't think you're driving your wealth. If you're worth 250000 and you go out and buy a $100,000 car, yeah, you're driving your wealth. Uh, cars, as you know, depreciate quickly. And uh, it's one thing to have a nice car, uh, but put it in perspective with everything else. My recommendation is not to drive your wealth. 75, are you a small business owner? Maybe you're self-employed. Talk to a financial prof- professional about retirement plans, whether it's SEP IRAs, individual 401ks, defined benefit plans. I learned this the hard way. You know if you've been following my podcast, a $100,000 mistake I made. Uh, retirement plans for the self-employed. Um, the good news is there's a, a lot of ways to save a lot of money for retirement. The bad news is they get kind of complicated. So make sure you know what you're doing. Make sure you know you're taking advantage of the options that are available to you. Tip number 76, keep some form of a journal. Uh, this kind of relates to finance, but it relates to a lot of other things too. And I have a couple of different ways that I do this. I'm not a big, you know, write in my diary every day kind of guy. It's just not what I've done. Although I tell you, as I look back in life, I wish I had done that, but it's just not something that I've done. But there's a lot of different ways to kind of, um, you know, keep a, a, a journal of sorts of, of your life. Um, one of the tools that, that can be used actually is Evernote, uh, which is sort of an all-purpose tool that can be used for a lot of things. But I think keeping a journal, you know, keeping your net worth, tracking your net worth in a way is sort of a journal, if you will. Keeps you, it gives you a, a snapshot of where you were and where you're headed. Um, so in, in however you do it, I think it's a worthwhile endeavor. And speaking of Evernote, that's tip 77. You need to use Evernote. Uh, it's a phenomenal tool. I use it for everything from uh, things to do where we live, if I see something that's interesting, that you know, for some fun event, um, save it in Evernote. Um, I use it for you can scan. You know, I mentioned a scanner. You can scan and save your 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 receipts and everything else to Evernote. I use it for all of my research for uh, on finances and investing and for dough roller. Uh, if I see something that 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 I want to write about or read later, save it to Evernote. Tip number seventy eight: Use LinkedIn. I think it's a phenomenal tool. It's sort of the Facebook for for our careers. And um, I'm, I'm not a heavy LinkedIn user in the sense of going to the site day in and day out, but I have a ton of connections in LinkedIn. It's a great way uh, to meet people, and it can come in handy if you're looking for a job. The problem is you don't want to start using it the day after you get fired or the day after you lose your, you know, you lose your job for some other reason. Uh, by then, it's too late. You want to have that, those connections established before you need them. Kind of in, in 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 connection with that, tip number seventy nine: update your resume. I like to keep my resume updated at all times, even when I'm quite happy and content with my current job. You never know when you're going to when you're going to need it. Tip number eighty: think about getting a certification in your field, whether it's finance. I know there's a lot of certifications in the technology field. Uh, they can be a great way to further your education and make you more employable. Perhaps even get a raise at your current uh, job. Tip number eighty-one: uh, If you if you're a significant if you give a lot of money to charity, consider using a donor advised fund. I don't think I've talked a lot about these. Um, I'll work up a podcast on this. Um, Vanguard offers one. Fidelity offers one. It's a great way to to give appreciated stock, for example, uh, to charities. It goes to a fund uh, that you can then direct where those monies are going to go to what charities. Uh, and it, it's a it's a very versatile way uh, to give money to you know for to to sort of funnel your charitable giving. It's called a donor advised fund. Eighty two. Think twice before lending money to friends and family. I know we want to help people. Uh, certainly, um, it, it, you know you can have friends and family that are in dire need, and that may be appropriate to lend some money to them. But think twice before doing it. It can also create a lot of issues in your relationship with them. 83, I alluded to this earlier, only insure what you can't afford 
to replace. That's one of the reasons I keep our deductibles uh, so high. Uh, obviously, insurance is an important part of risk management. Uh, we need insurance, but only insure what you can't afford uh, to replace. Tip 84, maximize your credit card perks. For example, a lot of credit cards will extend the warranties on things that you buy, will provide coverage if you damage something that you've bought using that credit card or it's stolen. Um, they can provide uh, roadside assistance. Uh, they can give you uh, uh, the ability to return something even when the store won't accept the return. There are a lot of credit card perks that you might not know about. So check out the credit card that you have or that you're thinking about giving to learn about those perks. Part of that, I mentioned extended warranties, and I also mentioned only insure what you can't afford to replace. Tip number 85, think twice before buying an extended warranty. I never buy them. You know, I, I don't understand why I would pay $49 to extend a warranty on a $300 item. It's just not worth the money. Tip number 86, get multiple quotes for big purchases. We did that with a generator we had installed. Uh, we had to have repairs to a ceiling due to some water damage. Uh, the, the quotes for that repair ranged from 3000 to almost 6000 Huge, huge difference. Get multiple quotes for big purchases. Tip number 87, this is a goofy tip, but it's something that I follow. Don't buy your checks from your bank. Unless they give you a great deal, they're usually costing you an arm and a leg. You can get cheap checks uh, online uh, from a lot of different places, but some people don't realize that. Some people think you have to buy the checks from your bank. You don't. And I'll put a link in the show notes to a, an article that covers, uh, that I wrote that looked at a number of different places you can buy cheap checks online. That'll be under tip number 87. Whew, I can actually see the end now in my notes. We're almost there. And by the way, if you've stuck with me through all of this, you are to be commended. All right, here we go. Uh, tip number 88, don't put all of your emergency fund in a savings account. This is my tip, my, my approach to this. Some people are more comfortable putting all of their emergency fund in a savings account. That's fine. Uh, I can't handle it because the interest rates just drive me crazy. Uh, so I put a, a, some of our emergency fund uh, in a savings account, but I put some of it in, in short-term bond funds. I say short-term, really more intermediate term. Uh, uh, in my case, it's mu uh, municipal bond fund because of the tax savings. I won't get into all of that, but consider uh, whether you can put at least some of your emergency fund in other accounts that earn higher interest. One tip I got from a reader was, go ahead and put it in a five-year CD that earns higher interest rates, but just look at what the penalties are uh, if you have to take the money out early, uh, even with those penalties, it still still may be a, a, a sort of a risk worth taking. Uh, again, though, if you're more comfortable with all of your your emergency fund in a savings account, that's fine too. Like I said, I just can't handle the low rates; it drives me crazy. Tip number eighty nine: Consider refinancing a thirty year mortgage to a fifteen year mortgage. Not only do you pay off your mortgage a lot faster, you'll get a cheaper interest, a lower interest rate. Uh, if you're comparing 30-year mortgages and 15-year mortgages. Of course, you've got to be able to handle the, the decreased cash flow. Payments are going to be higher on a 15-year mortgage, but it's worth considering if you're looking into refinancing. Tip number 90, rethink your life insurance coverage. How much do you really need? Sort of the rule of thumb is that I've heard, and there's a lot of different rules of thumb, but one I've heard is if you're going to insure yourself, you know, because if you were to pass away, your family would, would lose, out, lose your income that you're earning now. I've heard 10x your income. So if you make $100,000 a year, you'd want a million dollars insurance. Um, obviously, there are a lot of factors that go into how much life insurance you should have. You can't just use a rule of thumb to come up with the answer to that. Uh, but you don't want to buy more life insurance than you need. Some people prefer to have a little more. They, they want to kind of play it safe. That's fine. Uh, but rethink your life insurance. Make sure you're not in, um, buying more coverage than you really need. Tip number 91, get a second opinion if you're considering buying financial products sold by commission-based advisors, particularly annuities and life insurance products. Uh, depending on what you're buying, these can be very, very expensive. They may be the absolute best thing for you, uh, but if the person selling them to you is going to make a big, big commission, talk to someone who's got no skin in the game. Talk to someone who's knowledge, knowledgeable about these products, who's not who doesn't care you know, from a financial perspective one way or another, and get their opinion. All right. Tip number 92. 
calculate the weighted average of the cost of your investments. You know, we mentioned earlier looking at the expense ratios of each of your, each of your mutual funds. Well, now figure out what the total cost of all of your investments are on an annual basis. So you have to take a weighted average, right? Because you don't, you presumably don't have the exact same amount of money in each of your mutual funds. So you'll need to f- t- calculate a weighted average. There's a couple, you can do it by hand, which I've done. It's not that difficult. Um, you could use a tool like Morningstar and input all of your um, uh, investments into their portfolio manager. I do that too. And it'll just calculate it for you, which is wonderful. Again, personal capital, another uh, good option. But figure out what the cost of your investments is on an annual basis and then work to lower that. Tip number 93, you know, I mentioned refinancing a 30-year mortgage to a 15-year mortgage. Well, take that a step further. Write down every single debt you have, which you should have already done, and figure out if you can refinance each and every one of them. Look at every single debt, credit card debt, school loans, uh, car loans, of course, your mortgage, home equity line of credit or home equity loan, and go through one by one and figure out if it's possible to get the interest rate lowered on this debt. It's an easy and painless way to save money if you're able to do it. Tip number 94, consider the cash flow implications for major financial decisions. You know, so often we're faced with these decisions. Like I mentioned, for example, a 30-year versus a 15-year mortgage. Uh, Sometimes it's a 15 versus a 20-year mortgage. Another issue when you're refinancing, do you roll the costs of the refinance into the mortgage or do you pay them out out of pocket? That's just one of... Many, many examples in making that decision. Look at how the, how the decision will impact your cash flow each month. In other words, what will your payments be on each of these different scenarios? Figure it out and, uh, and look at how it's going to impact your monthly budget. It could help you uh, make one, some of these very important financial decisions. Tip number 95, if you can, telecommute to work at least one day a week. I know some of us don't have jobs that allow us to do that either because of the nature of our work or because a boss is just not, or a company is just not supportive of telecommuting. But if you can just telecommute, even just one day, it's going to save you a lot of money on uh, transportation, potentially, depending on on your situation, uh, parking, lunch, potentially. um, And it can just uh, take a little stress out of your week. Tip number 96, calculate your true hourly wage. This idea actually came from the book I mentioned earlier to, uh, in this podcast, Your Money or Your Life. Um, and you'll read it if you read that book. But what it does is it just doesn't take your income divided by the number of hours you work, but it also looks at all of the costs associated with your job, the clothes you have to buy, uh, transportation costs, any costs to maintain licenses or certifications, um, all of those costs. And it boils it down to a true hourly wage. It can be very eye-opening. Your Money or Your Life, the book walks through this in a, uh, very nicely. Tip number 97, give, give back something or give back somewhere, whether it's giving your time, giving your talents, giving your money. Um, find some way to give back. Um, I think it helps us keep in perspective uh, the, the, the wealth that we have, uh, I like to, by the way, I like to call it wealth, regardless of whether it's a dollar or or ten million, because that's what it is. Um, but find a way to give back. Um, again, it can be money, it can be time. Uh, um, I think it puts us, it puts our finances in the right perspective, and it puts, um, you know, the, the, really the benefits we have in this country in the right uh, um, perspective. And it's something that um, I don't, I don't think I always give enough attention to, frankly. And it's something that I'm trying to refocus on. Tip number 98, man, we're almost there. Get involved in something related to your profession, whether it's an association, a club, something. It'll help you make connections. I think it'll help you learn, uh, depending on exactly what profession you're in. Uh, But find a way to connect with others in your profession. Um, I think it can have a big boost to your career. Tip number 99, read the Wall Street Journal. I read it every single day morning. You know, it's not just about investing, too. The Wall Street Journal covers a lot of things. Believe it or not, they cover sports. I'm not sure they cover it particularly well, but they do. Uh, but a lot of, uh, uh, of content on um, international events as well as the markets. Um, read the Wall Street Journal. Uh, it's, I think, just a phenomenal uh, a resource. All right. Tip number 100. Man, this podcast seems as long as the other 99 added together. I hope it hasn't seemed so long for you, and I hope you found this helpful. So tip number 100, subscribe to my newsletter. Of course, that would be tip number 100. Just go to doorroller.net slash newsletter. 
It's free. It goes out uh, every Saturday at 7 p.m. Uh, you'll join almost uh, 18,000 other people, believe it or not. They get my newsletter every week packed full of links to articles that help help you make the most of your money. Well, there you go. I reached 100. Man, if you've stayed, shoot me an email. If you actually listen to this whole podcast, God love you. Shoot me an email and let me know. Uh, I'll probably get two emails. All right, drdorler.net. You know, I, as always, I love to hear from you. I do re- respond to every email, even if it takes me a little long, longer than it used to. Uh, I respond to every single email, drdorler.net. Love to hear from you. If you want to get the show notes and all the links and things that I mentioned in this podcast, doorroller.net slash podcast 100. Well, there you go. Uh, appreciate uh, your support. Um, uh, I've enjoyed the the first 100 episodes. Looking forward to the next 100. Hey, until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.